a Bible study? Yeah. Well, the Bible's ready to study and turn your holy scriptures to the Old Testament. Oh, man. We're going old school today. Yeah. I hope you love the OT. Yeah. The overtime, the old time, the old ways. Yeah. We got to understand that the ancient ways paved the way for these days. Yeah. Turn your holy scriptures to the book of Deuteronomy. Oh, this is the law a second time. You ever needed to hear something a second time? Because yeah, yeah. you didn't hear it the first time. God said, Deuteronomy, I'm going to remind you of who I am. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, we will begin our Bible study here. We're doing a series on a child of God. So this is a child of God, Moses. True. But this won't be the entirety of our Bible study. So lock in your seatbelt. We got a Bible study of Bible studies today. In Deuteronomy 32, this is Moses singing a song. Let's read the song. Deuteronomy 32, verse 1. Listen. This has got to have your attention. Amen. Oh, heavens, and I will speak. Hear, O oh, earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching fall like rain, and my words descend like dew, like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. Do y'all want to hear the word of God today? What's yeah. going on? It's fire. I don't hear any amen. Amen. I, I, when I read my Bible, God wants to hear me. God wants to hear you as we read the Bible today. Come on, then. What a statement. The Bible says that as it rains on grass, that's how the teaching should rain on you today. Amen. One thing I appreciate about grass is it doesn't really move. That's true. <laughs> right? That's fast. The rain's coming. The grass isn't ducking and dodging the rain. I hope that today you're not ducking and dodging the Word of God. No. That you're not playing bob and weave with the Word of God. No. But the Word of God sits on you Amen. and rests on heavy. you. Come on, bro. The Bible says in verse 3, I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Is that your decision today? Yeah. I love my dad. I'm going to call him today. I'm going to love up on him, but I'm going to proclaim the Lord's name today. Yeah. I love my father in the faith. I'm going to call him today, but I love and I'm going to proclaim the Father's name today. Yeah. Family, we proclaim the name of the Lord. Yeah. Then the Bible says, oh, oh, oh. We need way more oh's oh. in the fellowship. Oh. The Bible says, oh, oh, praise the greatness of our God. Amen. The Bible says oh. he is the rock. Amen. His works are perfect. Amen. And all his ways are just. Amen. A faithful God who does no wrong. Amen. Upright and just. Is he and the children of God said, Amen. You may be seized. I hope you love a Bible study. The Bible's ready to study you this morning. The Bible is telling us very powerfully who our Father is. Look at the person next to you and say, I know who my Father is. This is my Father. This is my Heavenly Father. You can't tell me who my Father isn't. You can't tell me who my Father is. My Bible told me, right. showed me, right. loved me, yeah. purposed me, mm. and created me to know who my Father in True. heaven yeah. truly is. Amen. The Bible just depicts God as being perfect. No error in him and no error in what he does. No wrong, no mistakes. And yet, we are totally the opposite. Facts. Yes. But he does not change based off of our change. Yeah. So he does not get weak based on our weakness. Amen. He remains Amen. perfect despite our imperfections. Yeah. He remains faithful despite your doubts. Yeah. He remains holy despite your lacking 
of righteousness. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that he is a rock, an immovable rock that depicts that he can never be shaken, yet he shakes the foundations of existence. We serve a father who parented the universe but chose to parent you first. Wow. We serve the father who has decided in history who his kids would be, mm. where his kids would live, mm. what they would look like, what they would talk like. And he said, I'm going to be the father to the fatherless. Mm. I'm going to be the nurturer to those who don't have nurturing. Yeah. I'm going to be the God over the poor and show them what true riches are. Yeah. That's the father we have. Are we grateful yeah. for Father's Day? Yeah. Turn to chapter 31. I, I am not convinced. Come on, bro. Turn with me to chapter 31. We need some context. Come on. In chapter 31, we get some context. In verse 14, the Bible says the Lord speaks to Moses. And the Lord says, now, the day of your death is near. Woo. This gives more gravity to what we just read. Back. Whose song was that? Moses. It was Moses' song. Now let's get some more understanding here. Moses writes this song knowing that these were going to be some of his last mm. words. Wow, yeah. Now let's continue. The Lord says, call Joshua. They didn't have cell phones back then. <laughs> and present yourselves at the tent of meeting. Where I, where this is God here, I will commission him. Mm -hmm. So Moses and Joshua came and presented themselves at the tent of meeting. Then the Bible says in verse 15, the Lord appeared at the tent in a pillar of cloud. Are y'all fired up for TNT? Yeah! yeah. We're going to be in tents. Yeah! As the old, you know, corny saying goes, it's going to be intense, right? That's what it's <laughs> Now, in this regard, we're going to be at TNT. It's going to be a time of fundraising. Yeah. Where, you know, yeah, we are selling fireworks. But the whole point of this is to bring in donations so that we would have more funds True. to put more interns on staff. Let's go. I hope you're grateful for our brother Kyle, who's an Woo! intern. Our sister Vanya, who's an intern. Know, our sister Crystal, who's an intern. Yeah. Family, through our TNT fundraising, we will put more interns, more staff, so we can get more Makus yeah. and Zarias in the kingdom of God. Can God get an amen, family? Yeah. Come on. Well, the Bible says while they were in their tent, uh oh, oh, a pillar of cloud appears. The cloud stood over the entrance to the tent. Verse 16, the Lord said to Moses, you are going to rest with your fathers. Yeah. Amen, Father's All Day. Right. Amen. And these people, interesting terminology, mm. will soon prostitute themselves yeah. to the foreign gods of the land they are entering. Mm. They will forsake me wow. and break the covenant I made with them. On that day, I will become angry with them and forsake them. I will hide my face from them and they will be destroyed. Many disasters and difficulties will come upon them. Mm. And on that day, they will ask, have not these disasters come on upon us because our God is not with us? Mm. And I will certainly hide my face mm. on that day because of all their wickedness and turning to other gods. Wow. I mean, what is God saying is about to happen here? Well, who's it, who's turning first? The people. Remember, we serve a God outside of time. The Bible says he is the alpha, he's the omega. He's the first, he's the last. He's the beginning, he's the end. He created existence. Everybody understand? Yeah. Yeah. Meaning he's outside of time. He knows the end simultaneously, simultaneously as the beginning. Wow. Everybody understand that? Yeah. He sees it all at one time. So the father said, hey, Moses, you're about to die. And this is what the people are about to do. 
and he commissions Joshua. You're going to lead the people into the promised land. But as you lead them into the promised land, they will turn to all the people around them. And they're going to imitate their character. They're going to imitate their behaviors. They're going to bow down and worship false gods. They're going to turn against me. They're going to become prostitutes. They're going to become men and women who turn themselves in direct opposition of me. And God said, I'm telling you, when that day comes, I'm going to be mad at them. Because that's going to hurt me. And the father said that it's going to hurt him so much that he has to bring discipline. Through disaster. Through difficulties. And then the people who will be alive in that day will say, has God left us? And the Bible says that God just simply says that he will hide from them. What is interesting is he's depicting what happens when people turn to people. Mm. Who is your God this morning? Mm. Who's the father you're celebrating? Mm. Who's the father you're honoring? Yeah. Who's the father, your father you're praising? Mm. Right here. Yeah. 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 Bob says on that day, someone said this, that day was Father's Day. Therefore, the title of the lesson today is Father's Day is not long enough. It's not long enough. That day was Father's Day, but those days didn't last. That day they were fired up. That day they loved God. That day they honored God. That day they were grateful. That day God blessed them. That day God was with them. That day, that day, that day. But eventually, they wouldn't look at God for much more days. And in those days, the difficulties were to come. See, pride won't let God inside. Pride compels God to hide. He said, I can't be there. Because if I'm with them when they're this sinful, they will think I approve of this. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Everybody understand that? Yeah. Think how hard that must have been for God. Mm. Imagine how difficult it is to know how someone's going to end their lives Mm. when they're four months old. When they're four weeks old or four days old or four years old or 14 years old. And you know that that's what they're going to do to you. But they would have never known that in that moment. Mm -hmm. Because the father loved them unconditionally. He was there for them as they chose to acknowledge him. Mm. Therefore, we get a deep lesson here. Father's Day is not once a year. You kidding me? Father's Day is an eternal day that we get to take to eternity. I hope that as we study the Word of God today, you decide that my honor of my Heavenly Father will go as long as life is in me. As long as I'm alive, as long as I exist, my honor to God will always persist. Can God get an amen? Amen. Therefore, God tells Moses in verse 19, now write down. For who? For yourselves. This song. So who was the ghostwriter? God. Wow. God wrote Deuteronomy 32. Come on. Sing this. Everybody understand this? Yeah. God wrote Deuteronomy 32. And 
Therefore, when we read Deuteronomy 32, yes, it's Moses singing. Yes, Moses wrote it down. But it was God's word mm -hmm. for the people because God knew that the people someday were going to turn away. The Bible says in verse 19, teach this song to the Israelites. Have them sing this song so that it may be a witness for me against them. The Bible goes on to say in verse 22, Moses wrote down the song that day and taught it to the Israelites. What a Father's Day this was. This was a Father's Day that was supposed to last forever. Mm. We're reading the same Bible? Yeah. yeah. He said, this, this day, you write this song down and you teach it to them. Mm. You have them all sing this song. Mm. This was God trying to save them from what he knew was coming. Yeah. He said, you, you're going to turn away. I know you are, but here's your shot. Remember this song. Mm. Yeah. Remember Moses' song. When people turn away from me, remember Moses' song. When people hide their hearts and turn to foreign gods. Remember this song. When people follow people instead of follow the creator of all people. Remember this song. When people turn to money and greed over God meeting their need. Remember this song. So that your life will be long. Remember yeah. this song. Yeah. Chapter 32. Come on. Do you love some context? Yeah. yeah. Now let's read verse 5. Come on. In chapter 32, the Bible says, now it makes sense. It says, they have acted corruptly toward him. Mm. See how God is outside of time? He's just saying, hey, this is what y'all going to do. Sing it now. Yeah. Isn't that intense? Yeah. Just sing it now. They have acted corruptly toward him. To their shame, they are no longer his children. Oh. But a warped and crooked generation. Yeah. Those words sound any familiar? Yeah. Who all said those words? Jesus, Jesus yeah. said these words in the Gospels. That's right. Wicked, corrupt, and perverse generation. Those were the very words of Jesus. Well, because it was the same words of God. That's right. yeah. The Bible says next, if you were to jump down with me to verse 6, it says, Is this the way you repay the Lord? Mm. Oh, foolish and unwise people, is not your father? Is he not your father? Mm. Is he not your creator? Is, it, is he not who made you? Mm. Is he not who formed you? Bible says, remember the days of old. Amen, family. Amen. The OT, the Old Testament. Yeah. Consider the generations long past. Ask your father, and he will tell you. Ask your elders, and they will show you. What is the Bible telling you? He's, he's instituting something. He's saying the leadership's responsibility is to tell you who God is. It's to show you who God is. He says, ask the elders. Elders were the leaders. Ask the shepherds. Ask the evangelists. Ask the women's ministry leaders. Ask those who serve in the family, who serve in the church, and they will tell you who your father is. They will tell you who God is. Why? Because the Bible told us so. Yeah. And he said, remember the days of old. And he says, they will explain all of it mm. to you. Amen. I hope you're grateful for the leadership God put in your yeah. life. Yeah. Do you realize we would not be here if it wasn't for leadership? Yeah. Leadership is so essential to humanity. The Bible describes that without leadership, people do what they think is best. Well, true. In fact, that is a very dangerous thing. Yeah. Bible talks about this judges that because there was no leaders, people did as they saw fit. Mm -hmm. 
It's a dangerous place. What is unity supposed to do? Or leadership supposed to do? Unity, unity and direction. How can we have that without leadership? Yeah. Meaning we, we need biblical, central leadership in our lives. Yeah. Are we grateful that we have central leadership right. in our family? Right. We're grateful that we have actually a set of instruction from God's word yeah. that holds everybody to the same biblical standard that Jesus taught That's yeah. right. in the form of first principles. Ooh. What a privilege. Yeah. What a privilege that we're not walking around trying to figure out what it means to be saved. God showed you what it means to be saved. You live what it means to be saved. And you see it in the Bible how it comes to pass to be saved. What a privilege it is that we have these things. The Bible is telling you you must defend it. That's right, bro. Do you understand that? The odds are not in our favor to finish this. <laughs> yeah. This was the first movement. Mm. The first exodus. Wow. Wow. The first people of God. Mm. And they fell away. Mm. After Moses and after Joshua. Wow. And God said, remember this song. Do you understand that Father's Day also includes parenthood? This means it's a day also of celebration to the principle that we get to have kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. So much of what we do is not just for our generation. Right. It's for our kids' generation. Yeah, yeah come on, bro. Come on. For our kids to have this. Yeah, for our kids to have leadership. That's right. For our kids to have structure. Yeah. For our kids to have the gospel. For our kids to know the truth. Come on, For our kids to know the family of God. Yeah. Yeah. The right. world has turned away from God. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. And is following desires. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're in a wicked, corrupt, and perverse generation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is the very grace of God that he handpicked you. Out of eight billion people. Yeah. 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 He made the out of eight billion people. Yeah. And said, You are mine. That's you awesome. You want to read about it? Yeah. 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 Yes. Well, let's read about it. The Bible yes. says this in this very chapter. Yes. The Bible says in verse 9 the Lord's portion. Is his people. Ooh. Do you understand that? You are God's reward. Wow. Say it again, bro. That's who you are. The Bible says you're his inheritance. The Bible says in a desert land, he found God. Talking about Jacob, which would be Israel, which would be the people of God. Mm. He said, in a desert, you found God. Yeah. Do you understand? We are in a desert. What do you mean it's in the windy city? No, we're in a desert. Yeah. A desert place. Mm. A place where God is not easily found. Yeah. That's what makes it a desert. Wow. And God says, he found you. Mm. That's awesome. In that desert. Yeah. Bible says, he shielded you yeah. in that desert. That's awesome. Bible says, he cared for you, in verse 10, in that desert. Bible says, he guards you as the apple of his eye. That's amazing. I mean, do y'all want to hear the word of God? Yes. Yeah. Would you rather hear somebody tell you who some imaginary God is? No. Some fictionary tale you want to find about God on TV? No. This is what the Bible says. The God said, write this psalm down and never forget it. Because people of this generation, one day they're going to desert this. They're going to give up on this. They're going to abandon this. They're going to oppose this. But let that not be you. Amen, church. 
stand firm. Fight for your faith. And fight for what's right. You are the apple of God's eye. Happy Father's Day. Come on. You're his reward. You're his inheritance. As you celebrate him, he's celebrating you. The Bible depicts that the angels celebrated when Mateo was baptized into Christ. The Bible says the angels rejoiced when a sinner repents. The angels rejoiced when Caleb and Emily came to the north in Chicago. They rejoiced. Because they knew that they were set apart. Yeah. The angels knew this was coming. Yeah. Do you know what's coming? Mm -hmm. God is working. Yeah. Right. The Bible says, like an eagle in verse 11, mm -hmm. that stirs up its nest mm -hmm. and hovers over its young. You better not mess with its young. This is God telling you, man, anybody messes with his kids, he's like an eagle in the sky. What is he saying? The demons won't see it coming. Mm. Satan's kingdom won't see it coming because God's coming from above. Yeah. Isn't that intense? That's sick, though. You ain't got no worries. God's hovering above. How dare anybody mess with one of God's young? Shame on him. Shame on anybody that messes with Jossie. Yeah. Shame on him. I mean, first of all, they're going to have to meet Jenny, right? You, 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 they don't want those problems. And before they get to Jenny, they're going to have to get through me. Then they're going to have to get through Jared. I mean, we we at least six six. I right. mean, if that'll turn them away, then they go they gonna have to get through the angels. <laughs> then they gonna have to get through God. Oh my, it, it's not worth it. Don't mess with Jossie, man. No. Sorry. No. I mean, you need to just warn your persecutors. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, man. I ain't the one. <laughs> I ain't the one. <laughs> sorry. Come on, bro. Like, I'm gonna pray for you. You you messing with the wrong one here. I'm, yeah. I'm God's. He is. You don't even see it coming. That's big. Facts. Let me tell you, you won't see it coming. That's why Luke six twenty eight is so important. It says, "Pray for those who mistreat you." Yeah. Bible wow. says God is a jealous God. You ever met jealous people? Yeah. God says, "I'm like that, but righteous." Yeah. <laughs> you you. Some of y'all was that jealous person. Yeah. Like, man, you ain't texting nobody else. You're not going to hang out with any other people. You're only with me only all the time. And this is how it's going to be. You was one of those jealous people. Don't lie. Don't pretend. Some of y'all are. Get a little stiff, right? The neck gets a little stiff. Stiff neck, right? Some, that was some of us. God is that way, but righteously. Amen. He will defend you. He will protect you. He will shield you. God always is over you at all times. Can God get an amen? The Bible says he spreads his wings in verse 11 to catch the enemies. Dang is the right word. That was the moment where we used the biblical word. Oh! That's what it says. He said he spreads his wings and just grabs them. Is that intense? There is not a bird that wants to mess with the eagle. Bro, that's right. They, they're men. I mean, a whole nother, whole nother Bible study right there. This is our Father's Day. This is the privilege that we have. Remember this song. I would encourage you to study this song. Amen. Family, a lot of us are about to leave for TNT. What do we know about Satan? What does he do? Attacks. He attacks a lot, a lot, a lot when, the when the leaders leave the spot. Who's about to leave this week? Uh, Think about that. Jackson, myself, Kayla, Emily, Kyle, so many of us. Casey, Jesse, all the region leaders are leaving. Anya, Trisha. Ivan, who just graduated from you. Yeah. 
he had his graduation at 9 a.m. He was like, man, they sinned, man. I can't believe they made me graduate at 9 a.m. I got to be in church at 10. But he was like, hey, man, I need to, I need to at least humble out. Amen. Can't graduate from college. Amen. But you'd be proud of Ivan. He graduated today at Come the on. University of Oregon. Amen. Yeah. And he's an excellent student. And for many of you know, I mean, he is an excellent student and an excellent example. And he was involved in studying the Bible with our brother Maku. As yeah. well. Amen. He sends his love from Oregon. Family, we're going to be away. So that means that Satan is trying to find a place to stay. Yeah. True. And that's what you must say. Not in my house. Not today. Can we all lock in, family? Yes. Is the singles locked in? Yeah. Are the berries locked in? Yeah. Is the campus locked in? Yeah. Is the whole North Super Region yeah. locked in? Long enough. That's true. But I hope y'all ready for a Bible study. Turn your holy scriptures to the book of Acts. Y'all love a Bible study. Yeah. Believe it or not, that was only the appetizer. I, I wasn't here last Sunday. I did my Spanish clothes in the central. I did my English clothes as well in the central. We love church out there. We have church twice. We have church at 10 a.m. And at 12 p.m. All right. I know Jenny's looking at me. Yes, yes, yes. I know a little Spanish now. Amen. Okay. I, I gotta, if I'm going to leave the Spanish, I got to know some Spanish. Amen. Okay. And it, it's an honor to serve our Heavenly Father in this way. And, and it was a beautiful time being there. But the Lord's had a lesson that I had to share. Oh, yeah. In Acts chapter 20. Come on. We'll continue where we left off. The brothers did a phenomenal job. I heard Caleb and Jackson preach the word last Sunday. Yeah. I watched the sermon as well. I watched it online and I was very fired up and grateful to see these brothers lay out the gospel in humility. Didn't they do such a let's give it up for these two incredible yeah. guys? In humility, sharing how powerful the gospel is. Mm -hmm. Very powerful, very encouraging. But I'm going to lay out the gospel today. Oh, in Acts chapter 20, I would love to do more of a Bible study. I just don't know how much you can Come handle. on, Danny. Are you at the edge of your seat ready for you and God to meet? Yeah. Is that how you feel? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to give you a lot in a little amount of time. Okay, well, the Spirit right. wants you to learn from a single verse. Wow. Come on. Okay. Come on. Help us out. And perhaps you've missed this. Okay. But God wants you to catch this. Yes. This is powerful. What this single verse teaches without having to say it in English. This verse was written in Greek. And since it was written in Greek, the meaning behind it is found in Greek. Okay. So let's read this verse, and then we will break it down in Greek. Amen, family? In Acts chapter 20, some context, Paul and some of those who were opposing him, the whole city in Ephesus had an issue with Paul in Acts chapter 19. They gathered a whole assembly, and literally Paul was being held back. He was like, let me at him, let me at him. And they said, no, man, you ain't going out. <laughs> and instead, it became an uproar. They were all confused. They were in all disagreement. They didn't know what they were really arguing about. People were talking about how Paul was trying to take away their gold and these images that came from heaven, which is not true. All kinds. It was just garbage. Everybody understand? Well, the uproar or the riot ends, and Paul leaves. Let's read verse 1. Of chapter 20. When the uproar had ended, Paul sent for the disciples, and after encouraging them, said goodbye, sent for Macedonia. He traveled through that area, speaking many words of encouragement to the people. That's pretty encouraging, I would say. And finally arrived in Greece, where he stayed for how long? Three months. Three months, Three months is a summer, oh, right? True. June, July, August. Yep. So he spends a summer with them. In other words, three months. 
Same amount of time. And so, the Bible says he does this in verse 3 because the Jews made a plot against him. So this was done due to persecution. Oh. So due to persecution, he stays in where? Greece. For how long? Three, Three months. months. So he spends the summer in Greece. Nice. Now, if Paul, if we learn anything about Paul, if he's somewhere, what is he doing? Preaching he's preaching the word. And the Bible just assumes you know this by now, right? We're in chapter 20. Everybody understand? Paul showed up in chapter 7, chapter 8. So he's like, okay, you know you've had 12 chapters of Paul now. With a couple exceptions because Peter got Acts 11. But after that, it was like Paul, 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 Paul. Paul. Everybody understand? Yeah. So you know that. So God's like, I'm not going to have Luke write this down. But I will have God write who shows up in verse 4. Okay. And this is where the Bible study really begins. Verse 4. Paul was accompanied by Sopater, son of Pyrrhus, from Berea, Aristarchus, and Secundus, from Thessalonica, Gaius from Derby, mm -hmm. Timothy also, Tychicus, and Trophimus from the province of Asia. Nice. Verse 5 says, These men went on ahead and waited for us at Troas. What's the name of our series? Oh, well, brothers and sisters, we've got eight. Ooh, nice. Eight okay. children. Of God. What's very interesting is of these eight, more than half of them are mentioned for the first time in verse 4. Mm. Meaning, very likely, they showed up while Paul was there for those three months. Mm. Paul converts them likely in those three months. Mm. And as he converts them in those three months, they now join his what? What would the Bible call that? Verse 4, what does it say? That he was a company. So they were in his company, which is an interesting terminology. Your company tells you a lot about you. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Very important. The company often becomes who you who you become. Or some would say. Your company is a certain way. It's only a matter of time before you become that certain way. Mm. Therefore, the Bible tells us and warns us in 1 Corinthians, as all of you know, chapter 15, verse 33, bad company corrupts good character. So we're learning something here. Paul must be very wise on the company that he keeps. Everybody understand that? Yeah. In the same way, it is very important that you pick your company wisely. Can God get an amen, family? Yeah, that's right. So what did we learn here? Well, the company you keep should remind you of the father you'll meet. This is powerful. Your company shouldn't be based on how they make you feel. But your company should be based on those who make you kneel before the Father. People that are all worshiping our Father. You want to read about the company? Yeah. There's eight of them. Therefore, there's eight points. Y'all love a Bible study? Yeah. Eight points today. Yeah. The first one. What was the name? Anybody know what to say? <laughs> Not soap, amen. Sopater. Sopater. His name means Savior of his Father. Savior of his Father. Point number one. We serve the Savior of the universe. We didn't get any O's that time. Oh. 
I, I, I'm grateful for that. That we serve the Savior of the universe. Yeah. Yeah. So Potter reminded Paul of who God is. Mm. His name literally means Savior. Yeah. Not his father. Mm. Now what's also interesting is he is from where? Berea. Berea. Everybody understand? He's from Berea. And what were the Bereans known for? Noble character. Remember that? Acts 17, verses 10 to 12. Says now in verse 11 specifically, now the Bereans Jews were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they eagerly examined the message every day. Everybody understand this? So this was powerful. So what we see is he comes from a group of people as a culture. That were known as dedicated Bible studies. Yeah. They were students of the Word of God. Yeah. That is where he came from. Therefore, as a result, you've got to be a student of God's Word over man's philosophy. Yeah. Can God get an amen? amen. amen. You've got to be a student of God's Word. It's time to learn some Greek. Ooh. And as Jared did the most insightful communion I have ever heard in my life. It's time to also learn some Hebrew. Can God get an amen? amen. That was powerful. There's so much meaning we miss unless we read where the Bible first exists. Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. This is Greek, though. So we also got to understand, you when you're studying God's word, you got to ask, does this align with the Bible, or does what man says malign the Bible? Oh. You've got to decide when you're, when you're in your company. Does this person make me malign the Bible, or does this person help me align with the Bible? Choose your company wisely. Secondly, we get another name, which was the name of Sopater's dad, which is Pyrus. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Son of Pyrus. Pyrus actually is just like Pyro, oh. which is fire. fire. Wow. Do y'all love a Bible study? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Meaning this, his dad reminded Paul of fire. Mm -hmm. Now the Bible says that God is a what? Consuming fire. Therefore, our second point is God is a consuming fire. This is powerful. We learned that just from Paul's company. Now, the Bible tells us a lot about fire. Actually, pyrus is an interesting word. It's only used three times, of course, right here, and then the other two times in Revelation. For the sake of time, I sense that it would be too much, so I will save that for another meeting. Those two occasions in Revelation. But if you dare to do a Bible study, Revelation chapter 6, verse 4, and Revelation chapter 12, verse 3, study it out on your own accord. But you'll see that the word pyrus is a reference not just to fire, but the word red. Yeah. Red. And that word's only used three times in the Bible. And those were the three occasions. Next, we have a third son, which is named Aristarchus. Aristarchus. Believe it or not, his name literally means the best ruler. I mean, can you pick your company much better than this? Point number three, we serve the best ruler of existence. Can God get an amen? Amen. That is our father. He literally is the best ruler. Yeah. I'm so grateful that I did not die or get baptized in the name of Joe Biden. Yeah. Yeah. Praise yeah. Jesus, right? I'm glad I'm not getting baptized in any of y'all's name. Amen. But I'm grateful. I love y'all. No offense. You know what I mean? Don't hear what I'm not saying. But I love y'all. But I'm grateful that I'm baptized in the name of my ruler, my savior, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Amen. What a privilege. We serve the best ruler. Aristarchus was introduced in chapter 19, actually. Mm -hmm. 
in chapter 19 and verse 29, it says, Soon the whole city was in an uproar. The people seized Gaius and Aristarchus. So he was there during the riot of chapter 19. And he becomes one of Paul's traveling partners after that in chapter 20. So he was already a disciple before they went to Greece. Fourthly, what's the next name? Secundus. What does that sound like? His name literally means fortunate because it also means second. So point number four, we serve the God of second chance. In fact, that wasn't even my title. That's what people say. My fourth point really was, Ooh, come on, bro. we are fortunate to have multiple second chances. We are fortunate to have multiple second chances. Can God get an amen? amen? Imagine like you just look at your friend and every day you're reminded, man, God just gives us multiple second chances. <laughs> Think that's Paul's company. Everybody reading this? Same Bible here? Yeah. Those were his friends. He's like, man, your name is that. You can come with me, man. Fortunate. I need that. I need for, I need God. Yeah. You remind me of God. Cool. Your dad's name's fire. Okay, cool. You can come with me. You remind me of God's a consuming fire. He's like, every time he talks to his friend, every time he says his friend's name, he's honoring God. Wow. Are we starting to understand? Yeah. That's the kind of company you want to keep. The company you keep should make, remind you of the father you will meet. What a statement here. Secundus, fortunate, second chances. Fifthly, we have the man by the name of Gaius. Of course, we read about him in Acts 19, 29. We just mentioned that. Him and uh, Aristarchus was there in the uproar. Now, Gaius literally means Lord. Can you make this up? <laughs> his name literally means Lord. He chose his company very wisely, didn't Paul? Yeah. Paul's like, man, everybody in this group about to remind me of Jesus. And that is what he needed, I personally believe, because of all the opposition he faced. All the opposition, every town, every city. The Bible says that everywhere I go, the Holy Spirit warns me that death is awaiting me. Prison and hardship is awaiting me. Remember he says this? So he's like, man, everywhere I go, okay, I need to have some friends that are close to God everywhere I go. Yeah. And I need people that remind me about God everywhere I go. I'm so grateful for Jared and Amelia Keith. That was the most, y'all are, not, are y'all not grateful for the Keiths? Jared and Amelia stay faithful. Didn't stay faithful. Are you are you understanding the foundation that they've laid here? Yeah. How much they've withstood? Opposition, attack, Satan. Attacking their family. And yet they're still the light of the world. Can God get me? I'm so grateful for them in my marriage. In my marriage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My wife and I, we, we were very fortunate to save ourselves to marriage. We were our first everything. Come on. I, I needed to get a lot of input, advice, help on how to be a godly man in my marriage. I learned a lot from Jared. Yeah. My marriage would not be what it is if it wasn't for Jared and Amelia. Wow. I'm grateful to have them in my company. Come on, yeah, come on, bro. It's a privilege to have them. I chose, and I have to, for the relationship that I have with God, my company wisely. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Take that personal. Yeah. Yeah. Choose your five. Yeah. Your five. That you're going to surround yourself. I'm going to make you my best friend. Amen, Jenny. Yeah. Or I'm going to make you my best friend. Amen, Theo. I'm going to make you my best friend. Amen, Caleb. I'm going to make you my best friend. Amen, Toby. You just grab a brother and sister and say, hey, I'm going to latch on to you. Your relationship yeah. with God reminds me of what I need yeah. Yeah. Nice. in my relationship with God. Yeah. You choose your relationship with God wisely. While we're out of town, we have the privilege of having new discipling partners during TNT. 
And as we do so, I would encourage you, give your hearts to Toby as he oversees so much of the North while we're away. Give your hearts to Stephen as he oversees so much of the North while we're away. I'm so grateful to have Stephen and Nancy in my company. Yeah, come on, I'm so grateful. I, I need them. What a reliable man and woman. Seasoned. The, Stephen is the oldest spiritually man in our ministry. Wow. Wow. Yep. I hope you're grateful for a veteran like that in our family that's been seasoned and tested and is proven genuine Amen. by the standard of God. Choose your company wisely. Family, next we meet. Well, point number five was we submit to the Lord. Amen. Got ahead of myself. I was too encouraged by these brothers. <laughs> Along with their wives. In verse, in, in, next we see good old Timothy. Come on, Timothy. We started our Child of God series with Timothy, didn't we? Yeah. What does Timothy, Timothy's name mean? Anybody remember? Dang, man. Should I say, oh! Y'all forgot. No, his name means honoring God. Honoring God, that's his name. I would have loved to have kept Timothy around. Everywhere you go, we may honor God, honor God, honor God, honor God. Every time you say, remember, they're speaking Greek, not English. Everybody understand it? Yeah. You're alluding to honoring God every time you say his name. Mm. So number, point number six is honor God with your lives. Yeah. Honor God with your lives. I'm grateful that I have Timothys in my life. I'm grateful for Dennis the Apprentice. Come on, Dennis. He, he's my Timothy. He, he honors God with his life. I'm grateful for Jackson. We about that action. Okay. Right? I, I'm grateful. I, I, I see him, and man, it just honors God. I'm grateful for Toby. It just honors God. They remind me of my relationship with God. But man, how much more honor I need to have with the Father. Yeah. Seventhly, we got Tychicus. Come on. Come on. I don't know. Some people say Tychicus, but it's, it's <laughs> the way I've seen it is Tychicus. His name means fate. Is that interesting? Fate, like fateful, is what it really means. Fateful, meaning your ending has to do with your ending, which is very important. Like your fate, everybody understand that? Your fate has to do with where you end up, your eternity, which is so important for. Paul and all of us as Christians to consider. We are fighting for our fate. Every decision you make, your fate is at stake. That is point number seven. Every decision you make, your fate is at stake. We learned that here. Paul's like, man, I need you to remind me of that. I need to finish. I need you here. Just, just every day, I'm going to say your name because I need to finish. Mm -hmm. wow. What a brother to have. What a partner to have. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for Preston Inkley. He's that brother for me. Mm -hmm. wow. Man, we've been through so much together. Wow. He was the best man in my wedding. I was a groomsman in his wedding. Every day I'm around Preston, I talk to Preston. It's a reminder to finish. Wow. So many people that helped convert both of us have walked away from God. Every time I talk to Preston, it's a reminder to finish. Yeah. I hope you're grateful for brothers like Theo, yeah. who's a reminder to finish the race. And then lastly, number eight, <laughs> trough of us. Number eight, trough of us. His name literally means nutritious. <laughs> Nutritious. Oh, you can't make this up, right? He's like, man, I mentioned everything. Now I need to mention my health. <laughs> hey, man. That's fire. He's like, man, I, I'm not going to neglect my health now. Paul literally kept, he's like, man, I need you here, man, so I can stay healthy. He's like, man, we out here getting beaten, but man, I need them gains. Yeah. yeah, I'm grateful for Caleb and the Brick Mel Brick to remind us to be nutritious. Amen. What what a reference! He he pulled this man there. He said, "Man, I need you to remind me every day. My body is my temple." Yeah, and that's our last point. Your body is the temple 
of the living God. Amen. It's what the Bible literally teaches us in Corinth. And Paul writes his letter to the church in Corinth. Family, I hope you see the importance of your company. Mm -hmm. you, it is urgent to choose your company wisely. That's true, Facts, bro. come on. Let's go through those names one last time All right. to close. Sapiter, savior mm -hmm. of his father. Yeah. We have Pyrus, remembering to stay on fire for God. Yeah. We have, of course, thirdly, Aristarchus. We serve the best ruler. Amen. Yeah. Still Amen. waiting for an O. Oh. 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 Fourthly, Secundus. We are grateful that we have the God of multiple second chances. Yeah. Then we have Gaius, who reminds us to submit to the Lord. Oh. Then we have Timothy, who reminds us to honor God. Oh. Then we have Tychicus, who reminds us to finish the race because that determines our fate. Oh. Then we have Trophimus to stay nutritious because your body is the temple of the living God. I love you guys. To God be all the glory. And happy Father's Day.